Well, the growing problem of electronic waste is one that can't be ignored anymore. And that's where the three R's come into action. We have to reduce, reuse, and recycle. So that's why in this video, if you have a MacBook, a Mac mini, or even an iMac that you are using or maybe not even using, then let's give it a new lease of life and make it an ultimate smart home hub because it's possible. Anyways, if you're into smart home DIY and obviously love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then I've done tons of HomeBridge tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along and to also get good karma. So with technology improving at a rapid pace, over time our once shiny Macs become a little bit dusty, then we uh, trade them in or even sell them for scrap. So the outcome of this video is you have a Mac that you are currently using or you have one that's in some drawer or closet that you can use this video to fire up that device, invest $25 to buy a Zigbee dongle and boom, you have a smart home hub working for you. And I'll be honest with you, I had no intention to create this video until I had a remote session to assist a person to set up a Zigbee dongle using an iMac. Now, the good part was there is updated information to install Homebridge. On the other side, I had difficulty to find up-to-date information to install Zigbee to MQTT using a Mac. Plus, this video is also an updated uh, video to installing Homebridge using a Mac. So, what you will need uh, to get this implemented, you will need a MacBook or a Mini or even an iMac that's running at least Mac OS Catalina, which is version OS X 10.15. You'll also need a Zigbee dongle. In my case, and for this tutorial, I'll be using a Sonoff Zigbee dongle. You can even use a Combi 2 stick or any other that works well with Zigbee to MQTT. Now, as always, I've broken down the video into six parts with the timestamps in the description. They are one, we're gonna look at, all, at more in depth about Mac compatibility. Then we will go ahead and install Homebrew, and then we will install MQTT and test the service. We will also install Zigbee to MQTT, add in a device. Then from there, we will install Homebridge, configure Zigbee to MQTT, and lastly, we will do a quick demo using Apple HomeKit. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into this tutorial. All right, let's talk about Mac compatibility. As stated earlier in the video, I did say that at a minimum uh, from a software perspective, it would be Mac OS Catalina version 10.15. The reason being these are all of the hardware that supports the software and in return supports all of the package managers and all that will install future. So Node, uh, MQTT, so that's why Mac OS Catalina at a minimum. Secondly, you would also get the support for TLS 1.2, that's the transport layer security, uh, which is the protocol that allows digital devices to communicate over the internet securely without the transmission being vulnerable to any outside audience. Now, with, with this, what happens is if you have to use previous versions up to uh, Maverick, which I tested with my MacBook uh, 2008 version, you would have issues connecting to the internet to download any packages. And when I installed El Capitan, I also got uh, uh, feedback saying it was too old. So that's why that was the issue and I couldn't do the demo with that video. So at a minimum, uh, Mac OS Catalina, and this is all the supported hardware that you can have this ultimate smart home hub you and um, with a Zigbee dongle as well as Homebridge. So that's with the um, Mac OS. Now, just in case, if you have successful to install any other previous versions of uh, Mac OS, put it down in the comment section. Let me know how you did it so I can also investigate and try it with my Mac 2008 model. And uh, if that's still not working, let me know. I'll also do a video to flash a uh, older hardware version of Mac book with Raspberry Pi and have the same setup done. So do let me know in the comment section. Now from here, from the compatibility, the first one we're going to install is Homebrew. So Homebrew is a uh, the missing package manager for Mac OS and we, using this, we will go ahead and install um, this so that we can go and install MQTT, Node and other packages as well. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up terminal. 
Now in my case, for this setup, I'm going to be using my 2060, uh, no, 2021 MacBook Pro uh, 16 inch, which is with uh, Mac OS uh, Mojave. And then uh, we'll do the install through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first go ahead and copy this and paste it and hit enter. Put in your password, hit return. Now give it a couple of minutes for the setup to be done. So once the installation is complete, there are two additional commands you need to run before moving ahead. So you want to copy this command, paste, and then you want to go ahead, copy this command and paste. Now with this, Homebrew's install and this allows us to move on to the next one is install MQTT. Now to install MQTT, what we're gonna do first is I have a pastebin file that's right here, okay? And I forgot to mention this. So this is the pastebin file with all of the commands. And then we're going to go and uh, run all of them in sequence and have everything set up. Now, don't worry, I've also left the link in the description. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy brew install mosquito and paste and hit enter. So now MQTT is already installed and what I want to uh, say over here, in fact, I'm not running Mojave, I'm running Monterey. So that's a big mistake I did. So I'm running Mac OS Monterey. I just realized it uh, as this setup doesn't support Mojave. So I take that back my words. So what you wanna do is if you wanna go ahead and check if the service is working, Let's copy this command, command C, command V, hit enter. And you'll see that the mosquito is working over here, but we need to go and tweak the configuration file to make sure everything starts up, it uses the same information. So I'm going to hold control C, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy this command, paste, put in your password. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to at the end of this file, so I'm gonna hold on to Control V and just go all the way to the end. And then I'm just going to copy paste these two lines. Control X, Y, Enter. Now let's go ahead and try the command again. So you hit tap on the top key, hit Enter. And now you'll be prompted that to allow to connect to the network, so hit Allow. Now also at the same time, you want to make sure you want to go to system preferences. You want to go to security and privacy. And under firewall, you want to unlock. You want to go to firewall options and you want to make sure Mosquito has allowed incoming connections. Please make sure this is enabled. If it's not enabled, then you'll have difficulty communicating with it. And uh, also Zigbee 2MQTT will not function. So make sure this is enabled. You want to click OK. And that's about it. Now, go to type control C. Now what you have to do is, once you complete this, you want to go ahead and restart your computer. Now with the computer restarting, what we're gonna do is, you just wanna make sure the MQTT service is starting automatically. Okay, so you wanna go ahead and you wanna open up this tool called MQTT Explorer. And you wanna use the IP address of the computer to check the MQTT service. So there is another way of doing it. You can use LandScan or advanced IP scanner depending on what application you use. So I'll open up LandScan. And this is the IP address of my computer. It's, it ends with dot one eight nine. Now what I'm going to do is open up MQTT Explorer. I'm just going to fill in the credentials here. And I haven't given any username and password. I'm just going to hit on connect. So this is a confirmation that MQTT is working automatically because the installation already created the preference list. So you don't have to do any configuration. All you have to do is add in those two parameters. Now with MQTT installed, let's go ahead and install Zigbee to MQTT. Now to do that, let's go and open up terminal and let's follow the script that we have right here. And the first thing we're gonna go ahead and find out where this Sonoff device is located on which USB port. So to do that, we're just gonna type in ls-l def. Now you wanna scroll up a little bit and that's where the device is installed. So that's the information that we would use for our port information. So I'm just gonna copy this quickly and I'm just going to store it in a file. Just gonna keep it here at the side. Now let's go ahead and copy the first command. So this is going to clone the repository. 
paste, hit enter. So basically it's going to create a folder in Zigbee 2 and uh, in application, sorry. So you, you see a folder is created. Now we will go ahead and change folder. Now, before we go and hit the next command, the NPM command, you want to make sure you already have node installed on your computer. So there are two ways of doing it. You could go to node.js and you could install the latest version or you can go ahead and this type brew install node. So these are the two different ways you can install node on your computer. Now I've gone ahead and used the node.js manner. So I've just gone, I went ahead, downloaded this and installed a node, follow the instructions and that's going to be completed. Now once node is completed, what you have to do is just go ahead and type in npm ci as mentioned here, hit enter. Now, Zigbee to MQTT, all the packages are already downloaded and installed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to edit the configuration.yml. But using a Mac, you don't need to do it to terminal. We have to go to the applications folder, access Zigbee to MQTT, go to data, and you want to open up the configuration.yml. Now, the best way to do it, you have to use an app called Atom or Sublime to edit the file. I use Atom, it's much more easier. Don't use text edit because the indenting could be wrong and it may not start up correctly. So let me just go ahead and access this file. Now, first information I want to go ahead is update the MQTT information. So that's the IP of this computer that I have MQTT installed, which ends at 189, two dots, 1883. For the port, I'm going to access this information that we extracted from the def command and then additionally I'm going to add in some more commands so I'm going to add in the front end as well as an advanced command so I'm using port 8083 to access the web UI you can add in any port information so I'm using 8083 and the IP address is the same of this computer so it's ends with 189 and you leave it as it is from here from here you want to go ahead and click on save I'm going to go ahead and close the file and then the next command you want to hit is npm start. So you want to make sure hit npm start. Now with this what happens is we've already have the front end already installed. It's working. So if I go right now and access dot 189 8083 you have the front end already installed. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to quickly go and make sure I added one more device that I have here, my uh, trusty Sonoff device that I have for four years. And you want to go to settings, you want to make sure permit join is enabled. And I just want to turn this on to pair the device. So it already has found the device. I will quickly go and rename it called demo, rename device, Go to devices and if I click on demo, exposes, I can turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Now this is one part of the configuration. Now the next part of Zigbee to MQTT is every time you restart your computer or anything happens, it needs to load automatically. So I'm just going to hold control C, going to go back to paste pin, going to change to this folder. I'm going to create this file. Just follow all of the instruction, type in your password and all I'm going to do is copy paste all of this information right till here. So all of these lines, command C, command V, control X, Y, enter. Going to enable the application so it starts automatically. and I'm going to start it automatically. Okay, now there could be a possibility you see the service down or it could be running. So you want to make sure that you run these commands again because if you had to run the command C, it would stop the application and you will not see the window loading. So you can go ahead and test it, it's working. So if anytime your computer restarts, Zigbee to MQTT, both the MQTT 
as well as the application will auto start as soon as the computer starts as well. So that resolves all the issue. Now with Zigbee to MQTT installed, we already have a device. Now let's go ahead and uh, go and install Homebridge. So this is the uh, web page of Homebridge and we're going to scroll all the way down to Mac OS. And all we have to do is follow the commands. So we know we already have Node.js installed that we needed with Zigbee to MQTT. So we skip that step. And the first command is we're going to copy this, enter. Now Homebridge has been installed. Let's go ahead and uh, start it and set it up as a service. So you want to go ahead and copy this next command, paste it, enter. And just like that, it's set up. So basically it takes you three to five minutes. You have Homebridge already set up. So we're going to just copy this link, open a new tab, paste, hit enter. I've already gone ahead and tested multiple times installing Homebridge on this computer. So it has skipped the portion to create a username and password and click to see the dashboard. So this is what you would get after going through that process. Now I want to go to plugins. I'm just going to look for Zigbee to MQTT, hit enter. I'm going to go ahead and install the plugin. And then all I'm going to do is add in the MQTT information, which is the IP address of this computer. And then I'm just going to go ahead and close all of these options. Click on save, click on save, and I'm going to restart the service. See that it's already got the device. If I go to accessories, I can control the device. Now from here, let's go ahead and import all of this setup into the Apple Home app. Now from here, I'm going to open up the home app and don't forget to like and subscribe. That's my home's name. And then I'm going to tap on the plus sign, add accessory. It's going to scan the QR code, add to home, add anyway. It's going to put in bedroom. That's the bridge name. Hit continue, continue. And that's the demo switch right there. Hit continue, continue, continue. Leave it as it is. Done. So right now from the Apple home app, turn it off. Turn it on, sorry. So that's the whole demo. And just like that, you have now a purpose for your Mac, iMac, or even your mini that's been lying around, runs uh, OS, Mac OS Catalina and above. It supports the right hardware that I showed earlier. And you can reuse the hardware that's in your house. You don't have to scrap it or sell it or create any electronic waste. So that's a very good thing with DIY Smart Home. So let me know you were successful with this setup and if you were able to set up this same applications in the older versions of Mac OS because I really like to know. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. Cheers and happy automation.